Uh, segment 42, a few of my favourite things. That I think good. there's going to be singing and dancing and a kind of a musical theme going on there with a few of my favourite things. Maybe. Um, we'll have to see. Looking in the sidelines, I don't think so. Okay, <laughs> but uh, the description is an eclectic collection of designs from my everyday work. Each twisted figure is real world tested and kid approved. Nice. Uh, so let's um, have his instruction pick up under there. We've got Sam Cremens from the USA. He's standing there ready to welcome you. Oh, like in that, what's that film? Oh, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. The brain awesome. is on go slow right now. But that's pretty <laughs> Can't cool. think why. Can't I don't think know. why. I don't know. Uh, I managed to have a shave during the last one, so I'm feeling refreshed and ready to go. We're I didn't. Start this again. My turn next. I'm going to dive away for 10 minutes, see if we can manage both of us looking a little bit fresher coming into the early hours. Sam Creeman, top twister of 2020 at the Twister Convention. Awesome, Evie. There. Thank you for that update. That's quite a title. So well, let's, well, bring, let's him um, bring him in. Bring him in. Give him a warm welcome to Hi the guys. Q Corner Convention 2020. Hello, sir. Hey, how are you guys today? Uh, we are absolutely awesome. How could we not be? We've uh, we're still part of this, right? We haven't collapsed yet. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, well, I mean, how do I start here? Just introduce everything to everybody, or hang well, out with you guys for a minute. What we're going to do is we're going to get out of your way. If if it was your phone, just by the way, if your phone just went buzz, buzz, buzz in my ear, um, if you could yes. quickly switch it to do not disturb, if that's that. And then because the thing is, is that you're probably going to be popular. These guys are going to be tagging you in left, right and center. Yeah. And your phone Sam, might explode. Sam, <laughs> you're on YouTube. Sam, Sam, you're on YouTube. <laughs> I know I'm on YouTube. I know I'm on YouTube because <laughs> I'm on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, <laughs> the One of the Bloom Brothers there, I can see Brad Mock has turned up there for your class. We've got, uh, along with, um, let's have a look on here, along with 500 of his good friends. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pass over to you. You guys are going to have a lot of fun. We'll and just be here for you if you need us. With Sam. Here you go, Sam. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, I'm going to start you off with something super simple today. It's going to be one of my very um, easiest designs I do, real world tested. It's for my uh, everyday uh, restaurant work uh, repertoire. And again, like I said, super simple, four balloons, and it uses um, things we all end up with, a bunch of in our, our rigs, uh, those printed balloons. So. We buy these, we use a bunch of them, but we have a lot more left over. So I'm gonna use this Spider-Man one today. And what we're going to do is do a helicopter using a print balloon. Now, this again is super simple. It's gonna use the Spider-Man print. It's gonna use a black five inch round, a chrome blue 260, and a white 160. I didn't give you guys a process list or a parts list ahead of time simply because I didn't know exactly what I was going to show you guys until about 30 minutes ago. So I went through about 8,000 pictures to get all the things I wanted to show you guys today. So let's go ahead and start this up. Whoops, wrong balloon here. All right, I've got, we're going to inflate our five inch print Spider-Man up to about three and a half, four inches. Then we're going to take our black five inch round and take it up to about two and a half to three inches and split twist that round. Just like so. Okay. And we're going to tie that together. So now, and this is the joke I like to use whenever I'm doing this for the kids, is now we have Spider Man on a hoverboard. But not really. So we're going to set it off to the side. My rusty, trusty, premium, smart twist inflator that got sent to me earlier this week is doing a fine, fine job there. All right. Now we're going to blow up that chrome blue to leave about a hand width tail on the end. Push in the nozzle and do a tulip twist on it. Not a very deep one, only about an inch or so. Just like that, okay? 
All right. So we're going to measure about a hand and a thumb bubble and do two one inch pinch twists. Just like that. Okay. We're going to then wrap this remaining part of the 260 around the joint of the five inch rounds. Don't worry guys, not all the balloons are gonna be super crazy simple. Some of them are gonna be just a little bit more um, detailed than this. I just wanna start out small, work our way up, all right? So, now we've got this point right here. We're gonna measure a hand and a thumb bubble from those pinch twists. And we're going to put in two more one inch pitch twists. I don't know what that is in metric. I'm uh, American. I don't have to use metric. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do a hand and a thumb bubble. Bring it around in a loop and back into those pinch twists, just like that. Okay. Now, with what's left here, we're going to go to the very end. I'm stretching it out just a little bit. We're going to go to the very end and pinch off a tiny little quarter inch bubble just like that. And we're going to twist that into a loop. So at this point right here, and that smaller loop is going to fit inside the bigger loop, sort of crossways. I'm so accustomed to doing this on a DVD or a digital download that if this pops, you guys got to see it happen live. So we're at this point right here. So out of our Spider-Man costume, we got the blue of the Spider-Man costume. Now, whoops, now we're going to take a white 160, and this will be the rotors of our helicopter. Uh -huh. Leave a little bit of a tail on the end there. You can see. Just about a three finger tail or less. Now I measure out one, two, four hand widths. Bring it down, make another bubble the exact same size. We tie them together like that. And then one more bubble. Bring it down, wrap it in. I take off my excess there just like so. The car, which is probably what my wife is going to do before this quarantine's over. She's not watching. It's okay. If I come up missing, you guys know she's smothered me with a pillow. All right. Okay. So these we're going to squeeze together. And these are going to be our rotor blades of our little helicopter. We're going to twist those into that pinch twist or that tulip twist, rather at the top of the rotor mask. Give them just a slight up bend. And that is a good enough helicopter to entertain most small children in a restaurant situation. If you're in a hurry, these knock out really fast. They use up a lot of these prints. I use Chewbacca. I use the uh, Darth Vader. I don't use the Yoda. I go through those so fast. Uh, Spider-Man, Batman, you can make whatever. If Qualitex makes it in a print, you can use it in this helicopter, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna set that off to the side. Now, I'm gonna show you this cute little clownfish design I've been tweaking on over the last few years. In fact, let me show you what it looks like before we start. You can see there's a lot of orange in that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use different color balloons as we make it have this off to the side we can show it side by side so you can have it together okay so to start with you're going to need let's see here an orange 260 a second orange 260 an orange 160 two black 260s a white five inch round and a black five inch round for correction, not a five inch round and white, we need a white heart. Sorry. I'll be right back in. Here we go. All right. 
please forgive me for that mistake. I don't use a five inch round for this. I use a six inch white heart. And this is gonna be the eyes and the midsection of the body. So first things first, we're gonna inflate it to just the part where the lobes start to show and tie it. You don't wanna tie it up too tight. You wanna keep it fairly loose so there's a little bit of room for the air to move out around it, okay? So now we're going to twist it. About two thirds of the way up, and then these looks. So we're at this point right here. Okay. Now we're going to take our orange 260, or one of our orange 260s rather. I'm going to stick that on your nozzle, inflate it, leaving about a forefinger to hand width tail. All right. First things first, in the nozzle end, we're going to put two half inch pinch twists. One, two, and split them. Just like so. Okay, then we're going to do a hand width bubble, followed by a one inch bubble, followed by a hand width bubble. And we're going to take this. We're going to wrap around this joint right here between the eyeballs and the middle section of the body. Just like that. And back into those two pins. All right, so just those lobes down to where they are running horizontal while the 260 is going vertical. Okay, we're going to wrap between those two lobes. Correction, we gotta to go to this, make this bubble a pinch twist. It's been a minute since I've talked to other human beings. You guys have to forgive me, my words are mixing up a little bit. So now we're going to wrap around between those two lobes, pull it in not super tight, but so it doesn't show the gap in there, okay? And we're going to measure up to that pinch twist we just put in place and twist it and lock it in just like so. So we have the one pinch twist on top, the two on the bottom, okay? Now I'm going to measure visually down to the nozzle of the five inch round and I'm going to put two more half inch pinch twists in there. Oh, I also want to clear up the record. Nicole, I didn't say you were loud. I said you had a very powerful voice. And that's all I could hear for a moment there. <laughs> Those two guys stirring us up. All right. So we got our two half inch pinch twists in place. See? We're going to tie the nozzle of our five inch round right into those pinch twists. And then we're going to measure visually again back up to the two pinch twists and pull it into place, twisting it around them, locking it in, and removing our excess. So we're at this point right here. Okay? All right. And don't forget, if you guys have questions, type them in there. I won't be able to see them, but uh, Keith or Dom will be able to read them to me if one of them is there handy. So um, any questions at all, feel free to ask. I may not get to them immediately, but as soon as I can see it, we'll get right on, okay? So, so we've got that in there. We're going to cut the nozzle off for that five-inch round. Dispose of it. And we're going to grab an orange 160. Now again, I'm doing different colors so we can see where everything goes before I show you and compare it to this model, okay? All right, so in this case, I'm using a green 160, so it contrasts. Uh, Woo, hold on, I have more, it's okay. Uh, Just like so. 
Now we're going to take that and we're going to tie it into that single pinch twist at the top of the fish body, all right? So, cut off your excess tail, nozzle rather, like so. We're going to measure up about two fingers. You have a nice little shock twist, just like that. I'm going to measure it down visually to just about an inch ahead of these two pinch twists back here. And I'm going to start twisting and pushing the air and twisting and pushing the air because I want to make a nice little thread of balloon right there, okay? Because we've got to have a little bit of gap once we're in there for the tail fin to sit and not be all wonky and crooked, all right? Just like that, okay? Now we're going to do a two-finger bubble, followed by a four-finger bubble, another two-finger bubble, like so. We're going to twist that back to those two pinch twists, locking them all together in our tail fin shape. All right, and I'm going to pull off our excess, just like that. Do not dispose of this. You're going to need it for the pectoral fins, okay? Now let's adjust things here first. You want those two pinch twists at the back to run horizontal along the body of the fish, just like so. All right. Now we're going to take our remaining green, but you'll be using orange 160. Now we're going to do for our pectoral fins, we're going to do a two finger bubble, a four finger bubble. Hold on, that was a three finger. A two finger bubble again, just like so. And we're going to tie them together in a little triangle. Now you can make this like a um, certain Disney fish with one fin smaller than the other. If you want, I usually do it, balance it out. That way there's no copyright issues. Okay. So from here, we're going to do another two-finger bubble, a four-finger bubble, and a two-finger bubble, just like that, and bring them together. So now we have two equal-ish triangles. Take off our excess, dispose of, just like that. Tie it so we don't lose our air, of course. And these are going to go into those pinch twists at the bottom of our fish now. I'm just going to pull it in between them. And I like to run those two um, pinch twists there where they sort of run lengthwise with the body of the fish. So now we're at this point right here. Now, I'm gonna add, where is my black five inch round? Here it is. All right, I'm gonna add pupils to the eyes. Now sometimes I draw those in. I prefer to use a five inch round to make my uh, pupils. So I'm just gonna give a quick little blast. Uh -huh. We don't want it very big, only about an inch, all right? I'm going to pull it, tie it, leave a little bit of play in there. You want it a little bit loose, okay? Because that's got to go in underneath the uh, nose, the, the brow ridge there of the, the fish. So we're going to squish that into two equal bubbles. So you can see there's a little bit of a thread between them there, that's going to fit just right under this part right here. And squeeze those in right at the front of our fishy just like that. Whoa, he's a little cross-eyed. There we go. Excuse me. All right. And now you can stop here if you'd like after you draw a mouth on. That's easy enough to do. Whenever I draw the mouth on, 
First, I get my saliva all over the cap. Keeps kids from touching it, especially in this day and age. <laughs> I know that's not funny. All right. First thing I do is I draw a little just off to the center, sort of crooked square, just like that. You can see that, yes? All right. Close that up. I take my black marker that my friends Matt and Steph brought me from Australia. And on one side of the little crooked square, we're going to do a little crescent. I'm coming way over here on about the opposite side of the nose bridge. We're going to do the same kind of crescent on that side. We're going to connect them across the top of the square with a little arc for our smile, like that. Then outline the rest of the little square with nice heavy lines. So it looks like he's got a little smiley mouth going. Just like that. Okay? Now, we can totally stop there. We got a fish, it's done. If you want to if, stop there because of time constraints, too many kids there, you don't even have to put the black lines on that will automatically call this Nemo or a clownfish, whatever. However, if you have time, a couple more details you can throw in. Detail number one, the black stripes. Now, what I use for those is just a puff inflated. Should we still be puff inflating? Uh, I am for here because nobody's going to be in here. All right? So, puff inflated black 260. We're going to feed it through just like that. Oh. Going to wrap it around, keeping it into that crease between the orange 260 here and the white five inch round there. You guys can see what I see on here. There's a picture and picture of me. The one is the, the live one from my phone that I can see me, and then the other one is a delay of about two seconds. So it's, it's uh, really <laughs> confusing sometimes. All right, so we've wrapped it around. We've tied it right there. You can see the knot. I cut off the excess, and you're just going to swivel and pull that knot around to hide it underneath this 260 here so it's nice and clean looking just like that all right now we're going to add our second one i don't know if there's a way to really puff inflate a 260 very easily without using a mouth inflation um I may have to take that out of my arsenal after this quarantine thing is done now for our Flat strip, we're going to do it here in the back. Same thing, you're going to pull through, wrap around, and tie. This time you want to tie it just a little bit loose because if you pull it too tight, it's going to hide right here in this corner where these pinch twists are, okay? You don't want it to hide there. You want to be able to pull it out just a little bit away from those. So now we're going to cut off our excess. And remember, guys, anytime you want to go back and work on this one again, this will be available on YouTube, okay? That's, and, and it's free. Okay. So as you can see now, I've got my black stripes and I'm just gonna push those into place where they follow around the contour and friction holds them in place, all right? So you can see right there, we've got our fishy, our clownfish with our black stripes. Now imagine this all in orange like this. This fish though has eyebrows. So we can stop here. Or if you got a minute, you can add those eyebrows and the eyebrows I'm gonna do. So it's contrasting so you can see it on video better. We're going to use, I'm going to use a blue 260. 
You use an orange 260 for this, all right? Just like that, we're going to leave a nice little tail at the nozzle end. And squish it a little bit soft. I'm going to take that bubble and I'm going to pass it right above the eyes. Just like that. We're going to make an equal size, equal ish size, super soft bubble on the other side, just like that. And I'm going to rip this off, leaving a nice tail on it as well. So, I'm going to get rid of that there. Okay. Now, I'm going to pull the tails of those in through the side here where the gills are, but I'm going to pull it underneath the joint of the eyes. So it helps pull it down a little bit, brings it down over the eyelids just a little bit, okay? So we're going to pull under those, bring it in, and pull it tight to the other side, and tie them together. That's going to squish your eyebrows down just a little bit. It's going to bring them in place like a cute little eyelid. Not quite sleepy eyes, but... It just adds a little extra dimension to it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is all there is to making this guy here. Now, again, you can hand this to a kid. He's going to play with it and play with it and play with it. Or you can step it up a little bit. And you can have a headband. Now, what I've done for the headband here ahead of time is I covered the uh, the band itself in a Robin's Egg Blue 350. I put a seven-petal flower in mocha brown, so it looks like um, the sandy under seabed of the beach. A little string of pearls bubbles. A couple pieces of seaweed out of a spring green 260 with a pinch twist about four to five inches from the top on each side. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fish. I'm going to twist it into one of the fins with that pinch twist, like that there. You see, it goes right through in there. And then on the other side, we're going to do the same thing. Only I did this on the trailing edge, on the back end of the fin. So on this side, I'm going to do it on the front end of the fin. It gives it just sort of a little bit of a tilt. Makes it look a little like there's more action, action to it. And a little bit of movement to it without there being any real movement to it. So, as you can see now, we've got a super cute, let me get down in the view here, super cute headband with our clownfish on it. And that is real world tested from my everyday work restaurants, birthday parties, this thing has gotten a lot of mileage out of my repertoire. So we'll move on to the next design. Let me check my time real quick. I know I don't want to try to rush through everything. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. We still got an hour left. You guys got to hear me talk. So in preparation for that, I'm going to take my uh, float uh, 2020 sippy cup. Thank you, Steve Jones. Uh. Set it off to the side. Now, what you guys don't see is right in front of me here. So I've got this whole menu of ideas that I want to share with you guys today. <clears throat> One of them is a fairly new design. Um, I came up with it maybe about a year ago. So still fairly new, but I've tweaked it in that time. I've made it faster. I've made it a little more streamlined. And that is this cute little froggy. Isn't he adorable? All right. So I'm going to walk you step by step on how to make this cute little froggy. I'm going to set him off to the side here. Now, you can do this with a single um, green lime green 350, but I like to make the underbelly a little bit more pale. Uh, you can use white. I like to use blush. So we're going to wait. You don't need much. You're only going to use about four to five inches of this thing, okay? Just like so. We're going to tie those together at the nozzles. 
And then I'm going to cut the nozzles off because I put those in a box for a guy named Scott Tripp. Scott, I hope you're watching. Okay, so on our bottom side, we're going to do about a hand and a thumb width bubble. Just like that on the blush. On the green, we're going to do a hand and just a little bit shorter on this one here, on this bubble. We want that belly to really protrude on it, and we want that, that back to sort of pull the, the, the lip up into place, okay? So it's just slightly shorter, just like so, okay? Take off this excess. We don't need these anymore. Okay. And if you can't rip those off like that, um, Use scissors, use a cutter, it's it's just a stump type do it's, it's a lot of us do that. It's okay. All right. So I'm gonna trim off our excess there. Now you can see this is just ever so slightly longer, the blush is versus the green. Okay. So now for our eyes, I'm gonna use a single, you can use yellow, or you can use um goldenrod, five inch round. <laughs> You can even use a six inch heart if you want to. Now I, I blow this up to about two, two and a quarter inches. Tie it off nice and tight because I want these to stay nice and firm and round, okay? Oh, also, I'm supposed to say hi to Kelly out there. Hi, Kelly. She is the queen bee over at Balloon Twister Central. She's the one you guys call it. Anything goes wrong over there. All right, so <laughs> you're welcome, Kelly. These two bubbles are going to twist into this joint right here. And I just give them a good lock in place, just like that. All right. Now we're going to grab another green 260, lime green 260. You want all your greens to match this guy right here, okay? So, excuse me. All right, we're going to tie it off. Whenever you air it up, you want to leave a little more than a hand with the tail. We're not going to use the whole thing. And in the nozzle end, I want two one inch pinch twists. I usually tie off two one inch bubbles or twist off two one inch bubbles and then squeeze them together and twist them in place to lock down two pinch twists, just like that. Ah, okay, cut off the nozzle, because um, that is going to be his tushy, and if you leave the nozzle in place, some smarty pants kid is going to see that and um, use the word b-hole. So, you don't want that. All right, we're going to twist those two pinch twists, on this end of the body. Lock that in. I'm going to wrap it around, pulling those eyes up towards the green. Just like that, and bring that tail back to those pinch twists. Twist them around. Lock it in place just like that. Break off our excess. And tie it to make sure it's all nice and secure. So now we're at this point right here. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab another, well, correction, I'm gonna grab a lime green 160. Not another one, it's the only one. This time we're going to inflate, leaving a nice tail, a little over a hand width, of about a hand, two fingers. Okay. In the nozzle end, we're going to put a tiny half inch pinch twist, trim off our nozzle. <clears throat> And we're going to do a two-finger bubble 
followed by a two finger bubble, followed by a two finger bubble. We have three string of pearls. I'm going to bring this not uh, this twist right here back to the pinch twist and lock it in. And that's one of our little front flipper feet. Okay. I'm going to pull that underneath this 260 between the blush. 350 and the lime green 350. Bring it forward. <clears throat> so we're at this point right here. Now we're going to look at this. We're going to see that there's about an inch, inch and a half of leg right there. I want it just a little bit longer, so we're going to pull it out so it's like two inches, just like that. And then we're going to eyeball that and get it as close as possible on this other side. Okay. And twist a half inch pinch twist, followed by a two finger bubble, another two finger bubble, and one last two finger bubble. And bring those two fingers, that last twist, back to that pinch twist, lock it in place, get rid of your excess. And you can see where we're at right now. Give those little legs just a little bit of a twist, help pull them down just a little bit. Okay. Just like that is where we're at now. Perfect. All right. We're going to grab a green, lime green 260 again. And play. We're going to leave about a hand width bubble or tail on the end, rather. And in the nozzle end, we're going to do a four finger bubble followed by a three finger bubble, followed by a four finger bubble, just like so. And like we did our fish fins earlier, and twist them into a rectangle. Now, I know what you're probably thinking is, there's fancier ways you can make frog feet, frog flippers. This little design is streamlined to be super fast, and it's supposed to be smooth, so I don't really add a bunch of pinch twists to all the the toes and everything, I want it to be smooth. I want it to be nice and quick and fast, okay? If you want to put fancier flippers on yours, knock yourself out. I do this in a restaurant where I might have 30 kids still waiting. So, all right. Now, from there, we're going to do a four finger bubble, a three finger bubble, and another four finger bubble. We're going to take those and twist them into a second triangle just like that okay now this we're going to twist those two pinch twists in the back twist them in place nice and secure So we're at this point right here. Now what I like to do is I like to keep on this design, keep those two pinch twists right there at the back running vertical. You know, whenever you do a pinch twist, it's sort of got a length to it. I want those to run straight up and down, all right? Now we're gonna squeeze the air right there. We're going to, excuse me, lost my words for a second. We're gonna do a hand and a thumb bubble edge of my hand all the way to the tip of my thumb. And give it just a little bit of a thread in there, not much. We're going to do another hand and a thumb bubble. Make sure we match here. Okay. And now we're at this point here, we're going to take this twist right here and bring it back to those pinch twists in the back.
All right. So now we're at this point right here. We're going to squish these down, split twist them. So I can do this where you guys can see real good. Squish, twist, twist. And with our excess, I'm going to go ahead and cut the air out of that. I'm going to leave that tail on just for a quick second. And uh, I'll show you why in just a moment. But as you can see now, once we adjust everything, all of our twisting on this froggy is done. Now it comes down to your ink work. I prefer to use the term ink work to artwork because all of this is your artwork, okay? Where so ink work is your embellishments. Okay, let me grab this marker over here. First things first, we're going to give his eyes some pupils. Now, if you've ever seen the work of Lindsay Pookie Foster or Shana, Shana Sharp over at uh, Nifty Balloons over in uh, Southern California, you take the marker. And you draw a big old circle and fill it in. Now, whenever I do the second one, in order to get them close to the same size, I start small and I work my way out to the outer edge, okay? So we're going to start in the middle. Almost there. And just like that. Now we're going to add a little bit of eye shine, okay? The eye shine just gives your eyes a little bit of life. So we're going to take that. We're going to draw one big circle right at the bottom corner, overlapping down off of the corner of the, the black into the yellow. And then up here, off to the side, we're going to do two smaller circles. Just like that, okay? I'm going to do the same thing over here. So same thing. One big circle overlapping off of the black onto the yellow. All right. Set that to the side. Now you can see our little froggy's got eyes. Now you can stop here. If you don't have time where you can keep working on this one, stop here. You got a cute little frog, all right? However, if you got time, add those little brown spots. It gives them a little bit of texture. Makes them look um, a little more, I guess, authentic is a good word I like to use here. So, we're going to draw the middle of his back. One big circle. Flanked by a couple smaller circles. And do this. And you can't overdo it with these. You don't want to cover the whole thing with those little spots. You want to space them out a little bit. Give the impression of texture without covering the whole thing. I mean, these things aren't expensive, but who wants to spend all night working on one design of Sharpies? Christopher Lyle. All right, we got a couple on his back. We're gonna put a couple across his face here and on his haunches here, on his thighs, I guess we'd call him on the frog. Just like that, that's where we're at now. Put a couple up here on his thighs. One over here. Just like so, we have a cute little froggy. You see he's got his little brown spots everywhere. There's the lid. Okay. I'm really trying not to stick lids in my mouth right now, guys. I'm trying to break myself of these bad habits that uh, may call, put us under fire after all this quarantine stuff is done. Now, you see I left this little tail on, all right? That's because you can make him hop a little bit. Now, he won't hop very far, 
but sometimes what I like to do is give him a lily pad and I like to use geo blossoms for those. <laughs> So we've got our geo blossom, and now our lily pad needs a little white flower. So for that, white 250. You know, the, the lily pads, lily flowers, water lilies don't have to be super precise. So we're just going to twist a little random flower in place here. And like that, we got just a quick and easy lily pad. Now, with the tail that I left on there, it's right out his little booty cheeks. We're going to take that and we'll pass it through the hole in the middle of our geo. And we have a hopping frog. <laughs> I know. This is, <laughs> I love playing with these geo blossoms to do this kind of stuff to launch things. I'm going to set those guys down there for now. Um, what I'll do is on some of the forums, I'll post pictures of everything and link everything back to the Q Corner videos. So that way you have a, a static picture of everything you want to work with. Um, but let's uh, let's continue with those geo blossoms because I want to show you guys something. Again, this is a super easy design. I, uh, I call it the poison flower of doom. This is how I've gotten... 10 year old boys to accept getting flowers instead of like swords and stuff. I mean, I'll still make them swords, don't get me wrong. If I don't, they'd lynch me down here. All right, so we're going to start with a lime green 260. I'm going to leave about a hand with tail on the end. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to take a six inch geo blossom. <laughs> Just like so. Also, I want to give a big shout out to John Bowler, husband of Sue Bowler, for uh, hooking me up with this smart twist and later. Um, I'm really, this thing is really hitting the spot tonight. Um, it's not too loud. It's it's uh, plenty powerful. I'm I'm digging it. Right, so I tie those together, nozzle to nozzle. I take off our cut off our nozzles in, and we're going to just put a five to six petal flower base I'm going to go with five this time all right so we've got a flower now we want to make sure our handle is nice and sturdy so I'm going to measure out about a hand and a thumb bubble and another hand and a thumb bubble and twist them together back at the five petal flower base. Okay, now what makes the poison flower of doom the poison flower of doom is not the color, it's not the way you hold it, it's that it launches its poison, it's got pollen in there that's poisonous, and to do that I use a five inch round Qualitex polka dot balloon. Okay, this time we're using yellow because it's a good center of the flower. I grab my castrator pliers. I drop some of my garbage inside it. That way, whenever it pops in their room, they got to clean it up. I don't have to. <laughs> okay, actually, it's because it gives it a little bit of weight. makes it fly a little bit. So all I'm doing is I'm stuffing that like so. We're going to only inflate it up a couple inches like that. Squeeze the air down into it really good. And tie it to leave a nice, long tail like that and again this is a super simple design i just ended up with a lot of these left over one time that were starting to get a little old so i started using them up like crazy now i can't hardly keep them in stock i buy six inch geo blossoms i, I don't know probably four bags at a time at least twice a month now. so well not now but prior to the COVID 19 that was a thing all right so we're going to take that tail, we're going to pass it through the hole in the middle of our geo, grab down here, and aim, 
and fire, and I just hit my Star Wars figures on the other wall. So I'm sacrificing my toys for y'all tonight, okay? So going off this design, I'm going to um, show you guys something with Easter coming up. This is one that about three Easter's ago, I guess it was, used a Geo Blossom, and it was an Easter egg launcher. Now, let me check this over here real quick, y'all. Ah, somewhere or another over here is, oh, excuse me, okay, cool, 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 cool. We're doing great on time here, guys. That only took about 20 minutes to show you those, the frog and the, the launchers there. All right. So we're going to show you the Easter egg launcher. Now, as we all know, Easter eggs are launched out of the, the, the tunichi of uh, Easter bunnies. So I'm going to show you guys the Easter bunny Easter egg butt launcher. So <laughs> for the record, my wife hates this one. Right? We're going to inflate our Geo Blossom up fully. And we're making our bunny pink this time, all right? We're going to take a pink 260. We're going to make ears. <coughs> and I'm going to tie this to the nozzle, nozzle to nozzle. Just like so. We'll cut off the tails. Or the nozzles, rather. We're going to measure one, two, three, four hand widths. One, two, three, four hand widths. Bring those together. Just like so. I'm going to give it a small pinch twist and a remainder here. About a one inch pinch twist. Wrap it around, lock it in place. Take off our excess just like that. Then we're going to squish these together, and those are going to be our bunny ears. Now, we're going to be looking at this from behind. So this is going to be his tushy. These are his ears. We're going to put a tail right here, right above the tushy. So I do this with a white 260. And we just make a five, six petal flower. Nice and small petals, using like two inch bubbles. We don't want it to get in the way of the uh, projectile. So nice little flower. What I like to do is put one of those petals Let me go ahead and break this off. I did five petals here, six petals here. I did five all in a circle, and then one sitting on the outside. So it's got a nice, puffy, dimensional tail to what's otherwise a basically a two-dimensional figure. So we're going to tie it into that pinch twist at the base of the ears. Whoops. Just like that, okay? Now, to finish this up, we're going to add some legs to it. We're going to do little bunny legs on each side here. We're just going to tie those onto it there, or you can use blue dots, whichever. Uh, we're going to use a pink 260 for one of them. Whenever you inflate this, leave a little more than a hand with tail, about a hand and two fingers again, all right? So the nozzle end, we're going to put two. One inch pinch twists. We're going to do a hand width bubble, followed by a two finger bubble, followed by a hand width bubble, just like that, and bring them together at the pinch twist. Now we're going to do what I call a full span bubble. It goes from the tip of your pinky to the tip of your thumb. All right, from the pinch twist, we'll measure out a full span. Bring it together at the pinch twists, twist it, and lock it in place just like that. All right? With what remains, 
I'm going to pull that up into that big loop. Oops, see. Throw it on the floor. Walk around the table and pick it up so nobody can see me. And pick it up again. Now we're going to pass that through that big loop. And just like that, all right? Now with what's left, we're going to cut the air out of the tail right at the very tip. Drain the air out and tie it so the air doesn't leak out any further, okay? And then we're going to tie this through the hole in the middle of the geo. Whoops. Through the hole in the middle of the geo. Tie it back up into and I usually secure it then around the feet of our bunny just like that. So that you can see it's starting to look like the back end of our bunny, all right? We're gonna do the same thing on the other side, just exactly this mirrored over here, okay? Excuse me. Gonna add air in it. Hand and two fingers. Two one inch twist, pinch twist rather. Four finger bubble. There we go. Two finger bubble. Four finger bubble. Back together. Lock them in place. Full span. Loop. Oops. Came undone a little bit there, kids. Sorry. And we're going to pull that. Up into just like that. All right. Once again, cut off our exit and cut off our hair right at the tip. So we're at this point right here again, okay? Same thing as the last time. We're going to tie it around through the hole in the middle. Tie it. Lock it in place. And... So now clearly you're looking at the back end of a bunny rabbit, okay? The ears are way up here, wherever the head's at, so yes. Now we need another Easter egg. This time I'm gonna use a robin's egg blue, polka dots five inch, and same thing we did with the projectile for the poison flower of doom. And stretch it open, throw some of our garbage in there. Push it down so the garbage doesn't come out. Only inflate it up to about two and a half inches or so. You don't want it too big, but you want to give it just a squeeze to get that Easter egg shape to it. And just like our poison flower of doom, we're going to. <laughs> this makes me laugh explaining it every time. I do one of these, it's a unicorn too. There's something wrong with me. Okay, so we're going to take the tail end. We're going to stick it through the, um, the bunny hole, just like so. Hold it like this. Pull back, aim, and fire. And that is our bunny butt Easter egg launcher, guys. Now... <laughs> I don't know what it's like in your neck of the woods, but down here in Tennessee, um, these kids love their laser blasters. They love their weaponry from Fortnite. So I want to show you guys a super basic laser blaster, and then we're going to go from there. And I'm going to show you some modular ideas for it. I want to take a look over here, though, first real quick. 
Make sure I'm not running over it all. Make sure we don't run out of time on everybody. <laughs> okay. 30 more minutes. Wow. All right. So, for a super easy laser blaster, you can use two 260s. <laughs> you're going to start with this case, a lime green. And whenever you air it up, leave about a two finger tail on the end. All right. Give it just a little bit of soft because we're going to put a tulip twist in this end. And we're going to have a pinch twist up on this end in just a moment, okay? So, the tulip twist goes in fairly deep, about three to four inches. Just like that, okay? I'm going to take this in here, just give it a little squeeze. We're going to wrap it around that joint of that tulip twist and with our tail. Wrap it around just like that. All right. Then in this part here, this big loopy part here, right where it comes together, we're going to put a one inch pitch twist in it. Just like so. All right. Down here, I'm going to pull it, find the center by grabbing both sides, sliding your finger down the middle. I'm going to give it a nice, tight shock twist right there, just like that. This is going to be our barrel, our sight, and our whole receiver part of our laser blaster. Now, for some contrast on this one, I'm going to use a violet purple 260. <laughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to inflate it up to about leaving a three-inch tail on the very end, okay? So we're going to tie it. We're going to add two one-inch pinch twists in the nozzle end. Just like so. We're going to measure a hand and two fingers bubble, followed by a hand with bubble. We're going to bring that right back to these two pinch twists here. That goes there, twist it, lock it in place. Just like so, okay? And this is gonna wrap around this part right here. So we're gonna wrap it back to the pinch twist. Right, just like that. I'm going to measure out about a hand and a thumb bubble. Put in a one inch pinch twist. Stretch it just a little bit because we want this to come around. And wrap around just like so. Now, I will tell you, I already know ahead of time, this doesn't play in every market. This is crazy big in my market. Um, laser blasters with Star Wars stuff, this is a quick and easy Star Wars blaster. So pew, 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 you can't hit anything if you're a stormtrooper. But this is a modular design, okay? This is just the base. I can add components to it and turn it into a, um, if, if I've turned this into a, uh, Submachine gun for soldiers up at Fort Campbell Army Base, home of the 101st Airborne. Uh, they come into one, to a couple of my restaurants, uh, weekly restaurants up that way. And uh, sometimes the kids are this tall and 220 and muscle bound and you know, death dealing killers. <laughs> well trained killing machines, we'll call them that. Okay, but the, sometimes they like a good machine gun just to play with. Uh, sometimes the kids are a little bit older and they play, you know, the video games that are a lot of fun, the Fortnite or the Call of Duty. So, again, I know this may not play in your area. It plays big in mine. If it plays in your area, great. If it doesn't play in your area, don't make them. It's that simple. So I'm going to set that off to the side. I've done a bit of a pre-make over here. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see what I've done here is I always, if I go black, I always add an orange tip just for safety precautions, okay? So you can see I've already got this started here. 
So for this, I'm going to go with uh, add a black 260. And we're going to do the handle and the uh, foregrip pretty much the same way again, okay? So two one inch pinch twists. Hand and two fingers bubble. Hand with bubble. Back to the pinch twist. Grab another one. Ooh, excuse me. Got plenty over there. Guys, I just want you to know that in four weeks' time, this is the longest I have talked. Total. <laughs> in four weeks time <laughs> i'm sure my lovely wife is tired of me going mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> all right we're back to our two two pinch twists our two slightly different size bubbles we're going to wrap around again Just like so. Okay. Now we're going to, instead of measuring out a full hand and a thumb bubble, we're going to go a hand width bubble on this one and do our pinch twist, wrap around, okay, I'm going to take another black 260, excuse me, all right, and the nozzle, we're going to leave a nice big tail on here because we're going to make a couple components out of this part, all right, the nozzle end, we're going to put a one inch pinch twist, we're going to measure a full span bubble, Followed by two half inch pinch twists. Break it off, and that's what we got right now. This part here, we're just going to tie off and set to the side for just a moment. Now, this one inch pinch twist on here is going to twist into this one inch pinch twist right here, okay? This is going to be for all my Call of Duty fans out there. All right. And from here, we've got the magazine in there now. We're going to add the collapsible stock. So on what's left here, we're going to put two one-inch pinch twists. Just like that. Hand with bubble, hand with bubble, bring them together at the pinch twist. Now in this end here, we're going to twist right here, a one inch, to, what happens to one inch bubble just like that. Now remember this design also, Lends itself if you're doing Star Wars stuff. Um, can we say Star Wars stuff since this is a. I don't want it to interfere and get a, a strike from Disney or anything. If you're doing any Space Wars kind of stuff, you just add little greebly things on it and make the magazine shorter. And this is a fancier laser blaster. So this is our SWAT team submachine gun. It's also used on Call of Duty. Uh, I know this because my nephew plays Call of Duty like a lot. So that is, it shows you how modular this design can be. Now I noticed that I get a lot of requests too for um, the SCAR rifle from uh, Fortnite. Now it's, uh, I have never played Fortnite, I will be honest with you, but I know the, I know the, the rifle simply because I have this in uh, Nerf gun. Uh, thank you, Brian Asman. Okay. So again, we did the orange tip, and 
I just married a, a 260 tulip twisted orange tip onto this one here. In this case, I married marriage twisted a piece of 160 with a uh, tulip twist on the end and three little small pinch twists to give the, the barrel that shape and some stability, okay? Now the Fortnite rifle, the scar rifle in there is a little more colorful. It's got, instead of just black, it's, it's got sort of a yellow or golden rod. So I'm using some golden rod 260s this time. Uh, and we're going to inflate to about that far, leaving a little right out of hand with the bubble, or a tail on the end rather. And just like before, we're going to do the hand grip exactly the same way. So we're doing two one inch pinch twists. Excuse me. Doing a little more than a hand with bubble. Put your hand in two fingers. Then a hand with bubble, back to the pinch twists. I take that and wrap it around. Okay, just like that. All right, now we're going to do a hand with bubble, followed by a pinch twist. One inch pinch twist, followed by another one inch pinch twist. All right, now we're going to do a three finger bubble, followed by a one inch pinch twist, followed by another one inch pinch twist. And then I'm going to break off this excess here. You can see we're at this point right here, okay, guys? I'm going to grab another golden rod 260. This time you can leave a nice long tail on the end. We're not going to use the whole thing on this one. Excuse me. I'm going to grab another sip of water here from my float 2020 glass. Okay. I'm going to twist that, tie that into those two pinch twists right here, okay? Those two right there at the very front. And we're going to wrap that around again, just like so, into those two pinch twists. Then we're going to do a hand with bubble back to these two pinch twists right here. And then we're going to wrap around the body one more time, okay? So just like so, and then back into those two pinch twists right in the middle. And then take off this excess right here. So you can see where we're at now. We started here with our handle, two pinch twists, wrap around, hand with bubble, two pinch twists, to a hand with bubble to two pinch twists, tie in, wrap around, back to the pinch twist, back to these two pinch twists, and finally one last wrap around right there. Now, we're gonna make our stock section of all of this rifle. This is the part that goes against your shoulder. We're going to use another golden rod for this one, okay, guys? So, we're leaving a nice long tail, about a hand and two fingers. In the nozzle end, we're going to put two one inch pinch twists, just like so. And just like we did with the other uh, the little swap uh, machine gun there, or the swap blaster, we'll call it. In this in here, we're going to put a half inch bubble right at the shock twist, right there. Twist it into those two pinch twists. Now this time, though, instead of just dropping it right here, we're going to measure a hand with bubble, followed by two pinch twists, one inch pinch twist again. 
And we're going to do a hand width bubble. Hand width bubble. Bring those together at the pinch twist. Now I'm going to measure up, so I want it to sit kind of like this, whenever it's it's sitting up on the. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. So I want to measure up visually to this first wrap around. So I'm going to measure pinch twist right there. Break off my excess. Tie that in place so it doesn't come unravel. And this pinch twist, I'm going to tuck underneath this wraparound, okay? Right on the top of the, the rest of the blaster. <clears throat> so it fits just like that, okay? Now we're going to need the magazine for this rifle. That's where you put your Nerf darts, so, because this is just a Nerf blaster, okay? Uh... We're doing that with a black. Or you can use gray. I think, you know what? I'm going to use gray. I think the gray looks a little better. So I'm going to use a gray 260. Sorry, guys. I left camera again. <coughs> One gray 260, leaving a nice, generous tail on the tail end there. And I'm going to tie that into these pinch twists right here in the front, all right? Now I'm going to measure a hand and a thumb width bubble, followed by a pinch twist, just like so. I'm going to do a hand width bubble, followed by a pinch twist, one inch pinch twist again. And I'm going to do a full span bubble this time. So tip of the pinky, tip of the thumb, that's going to twist into these two pinch twists right here in the middle. If you want, you can flat weave to make that solid. That takes extra time. And just bear in mind that I've streamlined these designs to be as fast as possible because I'm what you call lazy. So adjust everything so everything sits flat the way you want it to. And that is our Scar Rifle Nerf Blaster. And that's all made the same way as this laser blaster right here that I use as my generic Star Wars or Space Alien whatever blaster. So that simple design, you can turn out three, four, multiple different designs. I, I have kids all the time want flamethrowers. I use this as a base. I mean, this is a base. This I turn this into my flamethrower. So, um, very, very simple, very modular design. And those of you who all, who all know me know that I love modular. I like things that I can add pieces to or leave pieces off depending on how much time I have to work with. So I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to check the clock one more time because if we have time, I'm going to squeeze in one more design for you. Okay. So let's check the clock. Ooh, 10 minutes. I don't know that we're going to have time for that in 10 minutes. So um, if you guys have any questions, right now is the time to ask. Um, Dom and Keith, are you guys still awake? <laughs> I don't know if they're still awake. You guys still there? <clears throat> hey, there you are. Oh, no problem, no problem. I was afraid I had lost signal, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know if you guys are aware, but a few weeks ago we had tornadoes in Middle Tennessee and, and really tore up, and sometimes the Wi-Fi gets spotty still, so. Okay. Unicorns. Effing unicorns. <laughs> I tell you what, 
if you guys want to take, if you guys want to see a quick second, I will show you my go-to. I'm in a hurry and I hate unicorns. Unicorn. Are, are you guys up for that? Awesome. Let me grab a wild berry here, and we need a gold chrome. Hold on. I have balloons everywhere in this room. Okay, this is the unicorn. Whenever I don't want to make unicorns. <clears throat> Excuse me. First things first, we're going to start with a Wildberry 260. I'm going to inflate it. Just like so. We're going to leave a little bit of a tail end. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a six petal flower. One petal is going to be bigger than the others. That's going to be your four lock of hair over here, okay? So, we're going to make that petal first. And then five smaller petals, all roughly the same size. Now, I'm doing this in real time the way I would do it if I was working at a restaurant gig. I'm also talking faster like I would do whenever I'm working at a restaurant gig. Um, just because this is a unicorn. And I'm so sorry to fans of unicorns out there. but Okay, so <laughs> there you go. You see we have our six-petal flower, uh, one long petal. That's going to be our four-lock. Then the five smaller petals. <clears throat> I'm going to go with a white 260. We're not going to inflate it very far because it's just going to be our two ears and our tie down to our headband. Okay? Just like so. We're going to measure a hand in a thumb bubble, another hand in a thumb bubble. Just like that. Twist them back to the middle like so. Squeeze them. Lock them in place. Whoops. And if you squeeze the air out of them, just take what you got left there and make another ear. I squeezed that, popped one of the ears. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? All right. Cool. I'm still a hero in your eyes. Cool. Nope. Hold on. Sometimes they pop, kids. That was one of those times. All right. Let's grab another white 260. <laughs> Perfect. All right, now pretend you didn't see me do that. We're going to start that part over. So we're going to tie a white 260 right into the middle of our six petal flower, just like so. We're going to do a hand and a thumb bubble. We're going to do a loop. Hand and a thumb bubble. Bring it down into a loop. Now, with what's left here, I'm going to cut the air out of it. Boop. <laughs> Blow that dust on some kid's face. Hope he's not allergic. I'm kidding. I, I actually have a mild allergy to that dust these days. I, so it bothers me more than the kids. Now we're going to take our chrome gold 260 uh, and pop it one time just for good measure. Let's redo that again. All right. Uh, just like so. Now, for this to make the horn, I'm just going to do a super fast, tight spiral. Just here, your standard candy cane spiral. I'm going to take it and squeeze the air as I twist it to help put it together nice and tight, just like that, okay? All right, so now I'm going to take off my excess. We're going to tie that right into this, right between the two ears on this, all right? So right in that slot there. So now you can see we got ears, we got a forelock, we got a little tussle of hair, and we've got a nice chrome gold horn. We're going to tie this onto a headband. And you don't have to cover the headband because you're making it all white anyway, right? Right. Because most unicorns, as we're finding out from little girls, are white. And this is my go-to unicorn for unicorns. Yes. Uh, I nervous tick. I'm not sure what you mean. Let me try it and see. So I take it, I tie it like that.
I might be wiping stuff off too, because, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Sometimes. How do I make a Harley Davidson with air, balloons, and awesomeness? Can I, like now? I mean, <laughs> you all have seen the Harleys I make. There's one in July in the politics calendar. Uh, yeah, I can make it. It's going to take me about six hours, and um, I'm going to charge you not less than $1,000 U.S. for one. Two of them, perfect. I need 50% deposit and two weeks uh, uh, frame on them. We get good air miles with that, though, yes, yeah, Sam? <laughs> Uh, um, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it'll sit very well. Sam, you've been awesome. Thank you very much. I'm just Thank having a look to see what else is in there. Loads and loads of compliments in there. And obviously, the emoji unicorn is making an appearance. Uh, it looks like you are measuring and then tying when you blow them up. You want to say that again, Keith? I, it it looks like you're measuring and then tying oh. when you blow them up. I think it's that you just... Yeah, I, I go all the way down to the end, and I feel how far I want to keep uninflated. Yeah. So, like, if I want to do inflation... You see, I keep my hand in place here, because that's how far I know I want to inflate. Nice. Is that what they mean? I, yeah, I think I think it was a combination of, of a lot of things. I think um, we've got a, a mixture of decorators and twisters uh, in the uh, in the chat, and I think they're not used to putting like using the finger measurements and things. Here's a one that I know you can answer oh. really quickly as well: is um, which inflator are you using? Right now, I am using the premium smart twist. Uh, electric battery operated uh, rechargeable inflator uh, John Bowler had this sent to me I'm I'm digging this thing uh, normally on a gig I will use a mini Mac light or a filbert pump um, if I'm doing decor um, I'm still kind of old school I haven't upgraded to anything with timers on it so I use an Air Force 4 and a sizer box right okay yeah but how are you finding the uh, the smart inflator for your entertainment Good. Um, I so far I, I love it. I, I this is only like the second time I've had it out of the box, it just showed up a couple days ago. Cool. So, um, yeah, it, I'm loving it. Um, if I can, whoops, if I can put one of these on my rig over here, I'm having a new custom rig made currently. So, um, if, if I can put uh, uh, an inflator like this on on that rig, then yeah, that's that's going to be a nice uh addition to my setup. Um, I like to keep everything nice and small and light. I know my current rig. This is this is my. Oh, I made this guy earlier. I'm hey. not going to teach you guys how to make that one tonight. Um, this rig here actually breaks down for travel. Right. And you can see it's got a mini Mac light in the middle of it. Um, but I've got a couple different manufacturers of uh, balloon bags on there, so. Everything breaks down into some of it goes into my check luggage. Part of it's carry on, and part of it is goes in my underneath my uh, front seat there. Cool. We were actually using one of those smart inflators at a, um, a trade show just recently, and we found yeah. uh, the amount of demonstration that we did with it. The battery was was fantastic. We didn't have any issues at all. So um, we were really impressed. Really. So cool. 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 Good, good to hear it from a you know an outright entertainer using that as well because uh, we you know we are, used to do a bit of entertainment don't do so much now definitely more retail and decorator I think it's a great piece of kit but uh, seeing an entertainer use it and uh, added in is uh, is awesome. Yeah, right. it's it's a it's a good workhorse of a, of a piece of equipment, so I'm I'm really enjoying it. Excellent. Right, we're just going to bring you back to the studio. Okay. Here we go. Let's uh, <coughs> bring you back in. There he is. Awesome. I need to do that. We keep on switching between who 
we're talking to because we have things happening in the background yes. that we <laughs> it gets confusing on which uh audio channel i'm working on <laughs> three people I'm, on the go. i'm guessing at some point sam you probably had some weird audio come through um to you at some point during uh when you were teaching did you get anything? If, if I did, I can't hear it. I used to be a punk rock drummer, so I don't <laughs> I ride motorcycles, so I don't hear as well as I used to. Pardon? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, Sam, you have been an absolute star. The comments uh, clearly, so clearly reflect that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so thank you very much for coming on. Guys in the chat, give them a thumbs up. Golden nuggets. All the I bet you there's some, yeah. Please, please show them some love in the chat as well. I'm sure Sam will make himself available in the chat for a little while. If you do have any questions or anything that you want to say to him, um, say a big thank you because, of course, he's given his time absolutely free of charge to spend with you guys to help you uh, improve your own skills and designs. So, yeah, please, big thank you to Sam. Thanks, guys. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, guys. Bye for now. Y'all have a wonderful night. You or too. morning, whatever it is your time. Don't know. <laughs> three in the morning. It's three in the morning, and it's looking good. Oh, my goodness. Oh. All right. You guys have fun. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.